Hello, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do some programming in Linux or any other operating system in C++. Everything today can be done on any system. Uh, we won't be using an IDE, but if you want to use an IDE, that's perfectly fine, and I would suggest actually that you do. But since Linux already has the compiler in it and everything, that's just what I figured I'd do. So, first of all, you're going to want to open your text editor, whatever you have. Uh, I have gedit for this one. Most Linux text editors come with options for the programming language, like right down here for mine. And for Windows users, I would suggest using Notepad++, which gives you these same options. If you don't use an IDE like Visual C++, uh, NetBeans, or Eclipse, I would just suggest doing this. So we're going to switch it to C, C++, or an Object C header, and basically, I guess we can just start typing. So first thing you're going to want to do is your include statements, which are basically telling the compiler which libraries that have already been compiled to add in. And for this particular one, we are going to use IO stream, which is basically the input output stream of the computer. And we're also going to include STDIO, which is actually not needed right now, but I will use it later. And it's just a good one to include. It's the standard input output library. And next thing we want to do is put a using namespace. I'll tell you why later. Well, and I'll tell you how to create namespaces quite a bit later into the series. But uh, for this namespace, std, which is just the standard, gets you all the standard uh, functions. And I'll show you why you want to do that, especially on in bigger uh, things. Uh, next thing you want to do is add the main function. And I'll explain this here all in a second. So this is a variable type, but it, any variable type can be put into a function. It just means that the function has to return that variable type of some description when it uh, before it closes. And void means nothing, so there are no parameters passed into this function. Uh, you can put arguments and stuff, and we'll get into that later when you might want to add stuff before you even start the program. And it's a useful feature, like when you're in the command line, you can add parameters to your uh, application or program, whichever you want to call it. Uh, this always has to be called main, I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, the computer won't recognize it as the starting point of the program. Uh, you put these brackets here to show the beginning and the end. Other programming languages might not use these brackets. Um, they'll use the white space, but since C++ is not doesn't care about white space, uh, you you could actually uh, write all this in one line with just a few spaces to allow the compiler to kind of know what it needs to do. But basically, you can almost write all C++ code right next to each other without any spaces or anything. And I might show you that at the end. But it's never a good idea, and it's always good to organize it somehow with the white space. But other programs will uh, depend on the white space to know the beginning and end. And others will mix the two, and you can do it either way. I won't go into all those right now, but yeah. Okay, next we will use the console out stream to uh, write a piece of text. You put the quotes to show that you're uh, doing text. And um, you can do special characters and stuff too, but I forget the exact ways of doing that. So uh, we'll do the classic hello world. And I'll add a little something special do it. Okay. 
so basically what this will do is print to the console hello world my nickname is Mike1211 and then we have to tell it that's the end of the line if you don't do this you'll get an error at the very end and I did it up here too basically after any declaration of any function you have to put the end of the line uh, that's that allows it to be non white space um, there's also a console in function these arrows tell which way the data is going so for a console in it would go to something else there and uh, that's how you'd use that but for now we won't do that now because we used the we said we're using the namespace std because we said we're using the namespace of std we don't have to put this in front of it now you if you were doing a lot of this like let's say i had another one here well if i wasn't using the namespace i would have to put it again and when you get to into really really long namespaces this gets really really annoying uh... i can't think of any really long namespaces right now but basically it's just best to say you're using a namespace if you know you're going to be using a function a lot so by saying we're using the namespace we don't have to put the std uh... double colon in front of that uh... i think oh the last thing you need to do is make sure your function returns a value. Now, your function can return any uh, number that doesn't have a decimal point because it's an integer, but basically it can return any number. The computer won't care which number. Uh, it's mainly for error, finding errors and stuff at runtime. Uh, if it like returns a negative one, then you can maybe know that it has a problem or if it returns a 1, maybe it's a warning, a negative 1 is an error, you know, things like that. Uh, but otherwise, it's basically irrelevant what you do there. And this should actually compile and run if I save it correctly. Now, I think usually I've heard that it's always best to save it with a .cpp, even if it is just a C uh, program it's best to save it as a .cpp and uh, let's just put it into somewhere where I'll know where it is so we'll do this as test.cpp actually we'll do we'll call it hello world hello world .cpp and I'll put these two together just to make it easier on myself when I go to compile it now I'm going to pause this recording and come back when I have looked up how to use the GCC toolchain so until then Okay, I found the relevant relevant information, and it's right here. It is how you would compile it, and we'll do that right now, just so you can see. Um, most, if you're using an IDE, it's just as simple as pressing run. But most Linux computers come with uh, GCC automatically installed, and I don't know about Macs, but I think they're about the same. So if we uh, head into here, it will either be called terminal or console. And basically, you just want to migrate to your directory, which I'm pretty sure mine starts out in my home folder, but I will just check using the list uh, function, and it would appear so. So then, we use the GCC compiler to compile our hello world.cpp, and the O means we're now going to reference the output file and I think we can actually just call it yeah anything we want to so we will go like that and what does it say CC1 uh, plus uh, GCC okay I will actually uh, make sure this all works <laughs> Okay, so I just figured out something. For this to work, you may need to get the C++ compiler, which is called G++. So I'm just going to grab that right now really fast, and um, then we'll get on with it. For this example code to work, now I will go back into C here once we get into some other stuff with uh, print and printf functions, but apparently uh, IOStream is a C++ library so you need C++ to do this current example code but I'll be back when I figure all this out 
Alright, so I have finally gotten this thing to do some stuff. So basically what you have to do is you have to get that C++ compiler to make it work. And then... Um, basically then you would have to do other things and... Um, as here. You have to put the dot .h on this one. Uh... I think it's because it's not as common as this one. But anyways, and commonly when I put the dot .h, I put uh, the uh, quotes around it. You can still do it the other way, but I think this way is safer. And then you run this line of code. G++, hello, well, the name of whatever you named your file. You can name it anything. Output, whatever you want to call your program. Now, to run it, you simply have to stay in your same directory here, type in the name of your program, and it went run. I'm not sure that I know why, but I can go look and see if it's allowed to execute or something. Um, let me see. I'm, I haven't done Linux in a while, so... 